I had several conversations with Norfolk and Southern today in reference to the traffic light at Krebs Road in Lear. Um, <clears throat> the word that I got as a 4.41 p.m. from Matthew Cook at Norfolk and Southern is that he has made, personally made all the adjustments to the railroad side of this project. They've watched train moves through this area and verified <coughs> all the delays are correct with their system. At this point, they are coordinating with the railmaster to do a live train test on Wednesday morning between somewhere between the time of 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. to verify that everything is operational. I will have representatives of the city there on the traffic light side, signal service who did the installation of the traffic light, and TMS engineering that designed that system will be present to verify all of the coordination and so forth. So. Yeah, Joe, uh, could you give us an update on your second favorite traffic light project in the city, the one at Weber Road in 83? Uh, foundation work and conduit work is ongoing at that intersection. They do have the, the, the pads for the new uh, signal arms in, the pad for the transformer and conduits. That work is ongoing. Uh, so, you know, they, the big thing was to get the concrete in the ground before the weather froze, which I think they've succeeded. You know, pushing the conduits on the road, we can work on that one. We're not anticipating to see delivery of the poles until sometime in February. I think, Mr. President, Joe, back to Lear Krebs. So let's say they do the test on Wednesday. What happens next if it's a success? And what happens next if it's not a success? Okay, if it's a success, because I'm going to be optimistic. If it's a success, we will coordinate that with the police department to determine the actual date that the light will go live. We will put up signage around the intersection so people know. We'll get with the cable studio. We'll get that out in the media to tell people once we pick the actual date that it will go live. Once we pick that out so that, you know, we want to coordinate that because uh, the police chief has said that he's going to have some people out there when it first goes active just to kind of draw even more attention to the fact that the light is now working after it flashing for all this extended period of time. Okay. So that's the final step. We'll just do a coordination. We're going to pick a date, look at the calendar and say, this is, this is when we're going to do it. This is the time of day we'll do it. Once it is approved, there, it's common practice is a, a two week notice before the light is activated then? Two weeks notice to give the public uh, the advance. Okay. Yes. <coughs> Our annual white tailed deer culling Utilizing sharpshooters from the United States Department of Agriculture has begun, and we're off to a good start. After two nights in November and two nights in December, they have taken 30 deer. The culling will continue through February, depending upon weather conditions, with the goal of at least 60 deer to be removed and the meat donated to local food banks. Once again, it's my pleasure to bring to you a historic designation and this will be for the house only and this is a name that you're going to recognize it's the Beck house <laughs> and everybody knows where Beck Road is running south off of Lake Road it is east of Jaycox right and west of Lear Road and this house is just east of of the street called Beck here's Lake Road okay here's Beck and this is the property here it's a narrow long property you can see who the owners are today. We're talking about 0.76 acres. I'm sure you've seen this property. It's always very well maintained. It goes all the way back to 1898. This has been verified. But when, you, when you're in the house, the windows are wavy. You can see how they're thicker at the bottom than at the top. Um, many of the windows are, are original glass. There's an old pump out there on the property that was actually used. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. This is the first reading for this uh, ordinance, and what it would do is reauthorize the Job Growth Incentive Program, uh, which we uh, first created five years ago. Um, Mr. President, you had asked me for a list of changes, and I will have that for folks um, later this week and certainly by the second reading when I would ask for passage of this. But uh, the 10-second summary is it would reauthorize the program for five years. It would reduce the... Um, uh, the cap on the on the incentive from a hundred thousand dollars down to fifty thousand dollars and it would better define who is eligible and what um, uh, what tax payments would uh, be eligible to constitute the uh, incentive payment so um, everyone will be hearing more from me in the next couple of days and uh, look forward to 
hearing this again in next week. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Koss? I move for passage of temporary legislation 10990. Discussion? Yes, this is an item that came out of the last safety committee meeting with a unanimous vote and support. <laughs> Um, I'd like to ask the mayor to speak to this agreement. Um, we have found over the years, we meaning the general uh, expert, experts uh, with regard to fighting the opium addiction uh, crisis, that if individuals get, um, get signed up and put into uh, treatment, immediately after they request it, there's a much greater likelihood of that treatment being successful. We've got a problem throughout the state, throughout the country where individuals ask to be admitted to a particular program and there are not programs available and they go 20 30 days without uh, having an opportunity to get enrolled and they're inclined to have a relief relapse so this tries to connect individuals who have been uh, either picked up by the police or go to a police station and ask for treatment uh, it does line them up using the Lakata way which is a uh, uh, which is a for-profit agency that does an excellent job not only in Lorain County but in Northern Ohio, providing services for them and also the uh, also the Alcohol and Drug Addiction Services, which tries to manage the uh, problem of opiate addiction and treatment within Lorain County. So it's a it's a three uh, th three party agreement here, which tries to speed up uh, the response time for individuals who who are in great need of um, need of help. Mr. Rossman, with the roll, please. Mr. Busey. Yes. Mrs. Fenderbach. Yes. Mr. James. Yes. Mr. Koss. Yes. Mr. Miners. Yes. Mr. O'Donnell. Yes. Mr. Shondel. Yes. This is the first reading of temporary legislation 11,000, and the purpose of this this ordinance is to reorganize the standing committees of city council. Currently, city council has eight standing committees. Uh, two of them, the public utilities and transportation committee and the environmental committee frequently do not have much business that come before them. Um, in particular, the uh, public utilities committee has the least amount of business to come before it. That historically was created to negotiate uh, uh, con municipal contracts for franchises for public utilities. In particular, the, the contract, the city franchise for cable television uh, the state law has changed since uh, that committee was created and municipalities no longer uh, independently negotiate franchises for cable television amongst other utilities. Um, certainly there are still times where we need an environmental committee um, to deal with environmental issues or a public utilities committee to deal with issues uh, involving public utilities. I think cell phone towers would be a, a prime example of that as well as, as other issues relating to utilities, electricity, um, internet, things like that. Um, given that there are seven members of council and, and eight committees, the council elect has met and discussed its organization and it seemed necessary and proper and, and efficient for um, council to organize itself in a way in which there would be only seven committees in order to do that, uh, we would merge the Environmental Committee and the Public Utility and Transportation Committee and rename it the Natural Resources, Environmental and Public <coughs> Media Committee. Um, name change is not nearly symbolic. One, one of the larger things that the Environmental Committee has done recently is managed our deer population. That's really more of a natural resource issue than it is an environmental issue. And the public media ch name change reflects a change that the uh, Cable Commission has recommended uh, to change the name of the Cable Department here in the city to the Digital Media Department. Certainly, that department has moved beyond just cable TV into social media, into other web uh, websites and the Internet. Um, so it's appropriate to, to modify and rename the committee to reflect the kind of business that will come to it in the future. Uh, Rob, excellent job putting this together so quickly. Um, as you had mentioned, um, ALC TV is changing their name to Avon Lake Digital Media, and that will be covered in a separate ordinance um, being presented next week. Um, but one of the duties of the Public Utilities Committee was they would send a uh, ex officio member to the Avon Lake Cable Advisory Commission. And with the name of ALC TV changing to Avon Lake Digital Media, the Commission, um, under the direction of Barb Cagley, has recommended 
that the commission also be renamed. And Mr. James, I have two suggested changes um, to the legislation that would uh, reflect the new name. And that would be on page three of the legislation, on uh, number four, where it says, uh, public media committee shall serve as the next official member of the Avon Lake, and then change that to digital media commission. Letting everyone know that there's a planning commission spot that's open. So we're going to extend that deadline, and we're looking for um, resumes from residents to be sent to Valerie Ross Marin.